What a citizen con we had this week. Absolutely amazing. My mind is blown and it finished with this beautiful trailer very lengthy video here 26 almost 27 minutes long about squadron 42 which is now feature complete as we talked about a little bit earlier on the channel and so in this video i wanted to break it down with you because there is really a lot to talk about so let's get started right here and the video starts with some uh, chatter here, radio chatter, we are in the Vega system. Now that this is important because the Vega system is one of these frontier worlds right next to the Vendul world. Now for those of you who are unaware, and there might be a lot of you because not everybody's been following Squadron 42, we're usually following Star Citizen. Squadron 42 is of course the single player element of Star Citizen, the spiritual successor to Wing Commander, the Vega system is, as I said, right next to Vendals, the, to Vendals system. The Vendals are an enemy species. They are an alien species, hostile to humans here. What you're looking at, here are the uh, Envil F7As, the military variants of the Hornets F7Cs that we can see in the Persistent Universe that we don't really use that much in the Persistent Universe because they have been rather put obsolete by some of the uh, other ships that we are that have been sold by Clan Games, okay. but it doesn't really matter in Squadron 42 because you're not going to be facing other human players. It's just going to be you and NPCs, of course, so they are not going to be buying other ships with real money. And that's why it's a pleasure to see some of those classic designs. If you remember the original trailer from 2012, back in the 2012, when we saw the first uh, Star Citizen trailer. And now we're seeing this one here. There is the fleet. I'm going to pause here because there's a lot to talk about. Uh, we are seeing quite a few ships, the Hammerhead Corvettes, very uh, useful against uh, Starfighters. We have the Idris Frigate here, which is uh, probably going to be the staple of the Navy that uh, we are going to be part of here in Squadron 42. It has a hangar, so it's probably going to be using used as a home base for your character. And of course, the Bengal carriers, which are actually the largest ships that players will be able to fly in the universe, in the verse, in the Presidential Universe. Yeah. But not just, there are a couple of other ships that we can see as well. We have another Hammerhead Corvette. The music is beautiful, by the way. I'm absolutely loving it. I'm pretty sure I saw a Retaliator. Yeah, there's a Retaliator right here, which is a bomber. It's a large bomber. Um, but it's about 70 to 80 meters long, so st quite considerable. Nevertheless, very useful against other capital ships. I love that they're using backpipes. They sound like backpipes. There's another retaliator right here. That fleet looks absolutely massive, I gotta say. We're heading towards a Javelin Destroyer, which is the biggest ship that players can own in the Persistent Universe. And you can see that uh, it does have a pretty impressive size indeed as we are getting a closer look at it. Now, of course, in Squadron 42, just like in Star Citizen, everything is, is seamless. Everything that you are seeing really exists and is physicalized and shown in real time. And that's what we're seeing here with those characters that are behind that window. And this is the player I know character. I just wrote to you. But a couple of hours ago, what you're going to be seeing here is quite on the other side of the jump cut. You know, of course, male, female characters, voice acted as well. And as you're going to see with different voices. So they had different voice actors to do the different lines so that you can choose the voice that suits you best. And that is awesome. Quaked. Where it is it might be that clan we've been battling with. So the clans are, of course, the Vendel clans. Uh, we are going to see them a little bit later. <laughs> Spoiler alert, right? And what you're looking here at, if you are new to Star Citizen, this is the Moby Glass, which is the equivalent of uh, an iPhone, right? But in the 30th century, which is when the game is happening. I guess that last fight didn't scare them, them off quite like we all hoped it would. And facial, facial beers, facial hair, and some of the new features that were shown during this year's Citizen Con as well that we are going to be able to use, of course, in our player characters. Honestly, we've been out here so long, I don't know what to pull for anymore. 
I just... I just wanted to let you know. I'll write as soon as I can. Stay safe. Your loving son. <laughs> this is wonderful indeed. And it's just a cutscene. Uh, Star Citizen is going to have a lot of these cutscenes because Chris Roberts loves the movie industry. He um, basically is trying to combine the both of his uh, worlds here, the movie industries and the video gaming industry into one package. That is Scorn 42, which is similar to what an interactive movie would be. Okay, I'm going to lower the sound of the video a little bit because I noticed that it was a little bit loud. Yeah, the music sometimes, or the sound overall can be a bit overwhelming. And again, everything that you are seeing through the window of the ship here is really what's happening outside. So it's all happening in real time. There's Gillian Anderson, at least the character that she plays. Lots of famous actors, A-list actors in Squadron 42. Something that Never we, gets old, does it? Something that Sir. we, <laughs> the backers, have actually paid for all these years ago. We chose that as a, a stretch goal. I think it was in the early 2013. And a lot of people were complaining that this might have cost a lot of money. It's true, but I do believe that it makes a whole difference in the end to have such great actors because it reinforces the sense of believability and also the overall quality of the final project. It is. I used to do the same thing when I was first coming up. Post up to the flight deck whenever I could to watch the launches. And here, when you look at this uh, character here, we're really seeing the best of what CIG have been doing when it comes to character creation. The moist in the eyes that so many people have been making fun of. But look at the result in the end. The details on the skin. The new hair tech, which they call star hair, <laughs> that is also uh, being done and, and, and com feature complete for Squadron 42 uh, with phenomenal results. The clothes as well, which are all physicalized and do not collide with other clothes, is also uh, something that may seem simple, but something that was difficult to make that took years. That also was laughed at. There were funny articles about that, but in the end, I think that no one is laughing now anymore because that is um, quite jaw dropping. That is the uh, F-8C Lightning, the ship that was recently sold via an in-game event, play to pay. You could also uh, win it for free. <laughs> it was actually quite awesome and uh, lots of people were enjoying it. You had to find those gold cards, lots of videos about that. Even on the channel, if you're interested about that, you will find that in the library. Have you seen the f 8 up close? No, sir. The thing's a beast. Nimble, too. Twelve maneuvering thrusters and three mains, it sure sounds like it. Sir. So by the time of Score, Score of 42 does not happen at the same time as the Persistent Universe. It's, uh, I think it's like 20 years before. So by that time, the F-8 Lightning was a brand new ship. So that's also why they're talking about it. They're excited about it. And it was a novelty to see those ships uh, at that time. The replacement of the F-7 Captain that you saw a little bit earlier. To the bridge. Captain McLaren to the bridge. Well, she has to go. I saw you apply to the Flight Academy again. Yes, sir. So that's what you're looking at here. It's probably at the very early stage of Squadron 42. And the fact that there is a flight academy is not a surprise. Usually every game like that, every flight sim do have a tutorial. So what we are looking at here is probably some kind of cutscene or some moment that do happen before we take the tutorial and we learn to fly ships in the game. Keep your head up. Took me a couple times before I got in. Thank you, sir. So what that means is that Probably we are also going to have another sort of tutorial where we just serve as a crewman 
in this Javelin Destroyer where we learn, you know, not, not everybody knows how to play FPS games. Not everybody even, maybe for some people, you know, maybe young players, that's going to be their first game. You know, we have to think about that as well. So, of course, there's going to be the tutorial about, you know, moving uh, AWSD, right? Those famous keys using your mouse, using your cursor. Maybe there's going to be a, a, a shooting range inside the ship where players will be able to learn how to handle weapons. So that's probably what I believe will be happening at the beginning of the campaign. And now in real earth here, this is Manchester, where Clan Imperial Games is located. But they have lots of other studios around the world, but that's where they are mostly making Squadron 42. Welcome to Clan Imperium Games Manchester Studio. I'm Chris Roberts, and I'm pleased to announce we have just passed the major milestone. Squadron 42 is now feature complete and has entered its polish phase. Now, this is huge because they have been working on Squadron 42 for such a long time being in this feature complete means they have everything that they want inside they finished all the missions they have all the features that they need for those missions and now they are making sure that the experience is going to be as smooth as possible they're going to improve the, the frame rates they are going to uh, optimize it so that this can be played on as many machines as possible this takes time on average it takes between 15 to 30 months so it's going <laughs> that's why we're not going to have any release date unfortunately, but it's entirely possible that next year's, at next year's season con, we may have a release date though. To celebrate this milestone, we've gathered some of our core leadership together to share what this means. Now you have to understand that uh, you have over a thousand employees now at Clan Imperial Games, and it is said that about 90% of these employees work on Squadron 42. So that's a huge amount of people. And now that the game is feature complete, it's expected that a lot of these developers are now going to be moving to the Persistent Universe to finally bring in some of the features that we need or some of the features that we saw in the presentation, like for example, player build bases. But of course, that's another topic for another video. As Chris says, we've moved into the polish phase of Squadron 42. Now, Chris, Richard Trier is one of the uh, staples of, uh, Cl of Clan Imperial Games. He was very important in developing some key gameplay for the Persistent Universe. He was promoted to Senior Game Director in charge of Squadron 42, and uh, it's good to see him again. Which means extra emphasis on ensuring things feel fun. This now, means focusing on quite insane here. Now, this is probably going to be the Shubin mining station. What you're looking at here are the Cygnus robots. So these are mining robots. They're not going to be used as weapons or anything, although they look quite dangerous indeed. What I do feel very impressed with are all of these markers that you can see here in the HUD. By the way, this is the brand new HUD that we saw in the Citizen Con. So they want to have or vision here or field of view as clear as possible. We still have our ship status on the left. We still have our target status on the right. But a lot of the other information that we could see in the middle before, like for example, speed or, or velocity or vectors, the uh, angles where we're going at, like for example, the compass, all of that now is above the MFDs, at least here in the Gladius, which is always the ship that they use as their gold standard. Look at the amount of uh, targets that they are here as well in the radar. That is also impressive. Lots of different colors as well, including red for hostiles. Yellow could be uh, neutral and the blues, I suppose, are the friendly ones. On the small and large elements of the game, such as dialing in combat encounters, but also looking at the feel of how you control your character or vehicle, and making sure it's immersive as possible. We've now, paid this, extra attention to how your character reacts when in their ship. This, I, I'm always uh, I'm always baffled when I see uh, all of that. But this actually looks fantastic. The uh, Drake Buccaneer, these are pirate ships that we're looking at here. Uh, the Gladius usually has uh, fixed weapons here, so that's why it doesn't have the round uh, gimbal interaction that we see with other ships. So that's also uh, something worth pointing out in case you were wondering where it was. 
Okay, let's continue the video here. So that you feel like an actual pilot. Man, those Whether explosions in Star Citizen, Star 42, hits, uh, also some the of the best there is in the uh, gaming universe Ship right AI now. has also seen huge improvements with closer engagement distances and more varied behaviors. There's another ship here, Anvil Hurricane. This one's a dangerous one because it has a turret here. Remember to be a, a glass cannon, so you have to be uh, careful though because uh, it still has a lot of power, power, especially you think you are safe behind it. Uh, that's actually not the case. You have to be under it. That is the uh, spot where it will not shoot at you. Yeah, very and with our new precision targeting mode, the action has never been as close. So that's actually a new thing that did not exist before, the new action targeting mode here. So it's like a, uh, a, a visiving mode or like when, when you're using your gun and you are getting a little bit closer to see a little bit better. That's kind of like the idea here when you are in your ship. Now, is this something that you can use with your helmet? Is this augmented reality? Uh, that's probably how they are going to be explaining that here. With the aim now on polish, we've all now this is something that I was truly mind blown when I saw that. Uh, that is a planet that I do not know of, but I suspect it to be uh, Gainey. Now Gainey is the uh, planet that we saw. Actually, it's a, is it the moon? Yeah, that's the moon of the planet that's blown up in the coil. So in the Odin system, and it was a long time ago. It was an old planet using an old system. Obviously, the uh, planetary uh, tech has evolved a lot since then, and uh, now we are seeing uh, probably a new version of that planetary tech. I was absolutely mind blown by the quality of the textures of uh, those rocks here, which look as photorealistic as it gets, you are going to be able to and also the project see into self the uh, strike water effects. So we can focus on individual areas to deliver the best experience. And boats. That's actually the first time that we are seeing boats in Star Citizen slash Squadron 42. It's also uh, a brand new feature that we do not have access right now, but who knows, maybe we'll be able to buy boats in the Persistent Universe. But that's, that's definitely new here, and that's something that was revealed in the presentation. Have a look also here at the new map here, which is going to be omnipresent every time when you don't know where you are, when you don't know where to go, you will still be able to look at that interface at the top left, which is going to be using the radar of your helmet, which is going to show you an indication as of where you're going or what are the features of the terrain going to be. Now pay attention to these stations here in the sky because we are going to be seeing them also a little bit later too. So maybe this definitely one of these planets in the Odin system. Now the planets in the Odin system have a reputation of being toxic or of being not really habitable. So it's I think that we heard, we're going to be hearing later that these are actually terraforming stations. This allows us to bring all disciplines together with a unified vision of enhancing the gameplay by seamlessly blending it with polished visuals, final cinematic performances, and our ever-improving technology. Now look at that. This cutlass here, that the ship that just came by, is is a Drake cutlass, usually used by pirates. And here the character just hid under that metal porch, so that the cutlass would not see the boat getting closer to that dam, which seems to be the objective where the player is heading to. And did you see those water effects here? Those waves, those little. Uh, riddles here made by the player as they move their boat. This is really some of the most realistic water physics I have ever seen in a game. It's absolutely mind-blowing. And it even rebounces as it hits the rocks. We're also dialing in gameplay features, such as the ship flight model for both atmosphere and space, which covers master modes, control surfaces, and our gold standard HUD and MFDs. That is a lot of targets, by the way, over there above that uh, above that dam and that lake. And yes, in Star Citizen and Squadron 42, flying in space and flying in atmosphere are completely two 
different experiences. It's like you're playing two different. It's like you're in two different games because it's it's you have to take under consideration the uh, the uh, the composition of the atmosphere, the weather, the pressure, the gravity. So it's uh, it's something that definitely needs some mastery and expertise. But you're gonna have plenty of time, of course, to get used to it. And the terrain. Our interaction for well. both the world and your character have also seen additional improvements. Allow so what you were seeing uh, before, let's go back a little bit before here, is the wheel. So that's that's a classic in video games, right? Most games now have this kind of wheel, which is interactable, and that's where you are interacting with your inventory. So in this case here, these are the various different weapons that you have access to, but also here, the multi-tool, which is uh, a tool that we use in Star Citizen for pretty much everything. It can be for... Uh, repairing, it can be for grabbing things, it can be for cutting, and in Scoring 42, you have a special one called the Military Grade 1, which seems to have even more functions than the one that we have in the Persistent Universe. World ...and your character have also seen additional improvements, allowing us to hone and craft environmental puzzles unique to each location, while allowing us to tell the story of the world around you. at that how you interact with uh, these different screens here and you have to find the right weight so that then the uh, puzzle that you're going to be the military using later multi-tool is an essential piece of equipment for every pilot that integrates the all attachments into a single handheld device and allows us to create really interesting challenges including physics-based puzzles using our updated rope tech and now you are able to go there because of the weight that you've put on that balance and then when it's wrong, right, you put vessels. it away. This is the UEE Navy. So what you are looking at here is the coil. The coil is a planet that got destroyed in the Odin system and created this huge debris field with this huge volumetric cloud. And there is that sun, the sun of, this, of the planetary system in the background, but you barely see it because, well, it's hidden by that cloud. And so a lot of the action in Squadron 42 is going to be happening in there. It's also going to be a dangerous place. We are going to be uh, seeing enemies that will be hiding in there, stations, uh, environmental hazards too. And uh, it, it's been taking them a long time to make it right. We've seen the coin in a lot of uh, features, in a lot of uh, demos in the past, and this is its latest iteration right here. I also like how they are going to be told totally the process here. <laughs> Obviously, they are not going to go down without a fight. And so we'll go back here in the uh, targeting Our targeting and marker system has also seen an overhaul, allowing us to highlight only the essential information that you need such as key objectives, mission targets, and high-level scan information. Now, this is really wonderful. Now, we can go back to some information here. It tells us the name of the hostile that we are fighting, the type of ship, as well as the class of the ship, too. Information, ...while keeping your overall view as clean as possible. Now, emergency assistant requested here also has a timer request. Now, what we are looking at here, what I believe this is, is the equivalent in Squadron 42 of the combat beacons that we have in the Persistent Universe. Now, these are missions that randomly generate, and these are part of the sandbox element of Star Citizen, and it's entirely possible that we could be having also such sandbox elements in Squadron 42 as well. Let's say we are there, we're doing some missions, and at the same time, you know, some of these uh, combat beacons might appear, perhaps, if your superior would let you, then you can be of some assistance and maybe earn some extra reputation, some uh, extra commandments for your actions or your bravery as you are protecting the people of the UEE. That's and boom, another Practical FPS there. combat and stealth which has seen a suite of improvements from improved looting, weapon feel and balance, realistic scopes, and smoother locomotion. Now, what you had here before was the new interface, a new inventory interface, which is a huge improvement compared to what we have in a Persistence Universe right now. 
in red is obviously the uh, interface of the inventory of the person that you are looting and in blue down there your very own inventory goats and smoother locomotion alongside our new and improved fps radar and scanner that provides you an overview of the battlefield but at the cost of ramping up your own emissions so that means that it's going to, what, also, what this means is that it's going to be easier for NPCs to figure out where you are. We've seen the introduction of our Maelstrom powered destructible environment, which adds a layer of dynamism to the experience alongside our improved AI that can now have hundreds of combinations of traits that allow us to create unique and challenging combat encounters that really push your tactical awareness and skill. Yeah, so that means it <laughs> What this means is that don't think that because you are some kind behind some kind of barrier like this that you will be safe. You will not. The AI will destroy them and shoot you down anyway. But I love this. And it's also a must-have in any kind of game right now to have these destructible environments. Uh, EA has that. Ubisoft had that. And it's only natural that CIG have that for their games. Now, these destructible environments are, of course, coming to Star Citizen as well. What you are seeing here as our uh, med, med pens. Now, Star Citizen also has a very wide array of different drugs that players can use at their disposal. And it's also very important in the game to know the drugs that you're using because each of these drugs have different effects. And so when you equip those drugs, you have to make sure that, for example, if you want to have an overall drug that would replenish your health, you have those. Because if you take, for example, a drug that would uh, remove the effects of a broken legs, but you don't have a broken legs, you are bleeding, then that drug is going to be useful, useless. But at the same time, it's still going to be increasing here your drug, le your drug level in your blood that you can see here at the bottom left. trajectory for grenades. I like that the new UI is also telling you where the grenade is landing. Now they did say in the last Citizen Con that they significantly improved also the recoil effect as well as the sounds of the weapons which has been reworked for the release of Scorn 42. What we are seeing here is the uh, cutting tool of the multi-tool. Now that's going to be also quite important to get to make yourself some uh, paths in the uh, in not just Quantum 42 but also in the Persistent Universe. Now you have to be careful because if that door here falls down, it's going to make some noise that will make you detectable by NPCs. So maybe you'll be able to use after that the tractor beam so that you nicely put that door that you just cut somewhere where it's not going to be making a terrible noise. We play and review the builds regularly and call our action points in each level from start to finish on where we need to improve the gameplay. Well, in this case, it's not going to fall anywhere because that is in zero G. But if it had not been in zero G, it would, it would have fallen eventually. So there, obviously, we cannot this touch those lasers. This is an incredibly lasers. rewarding stage of development for me and the team, as the ultimate vision of the game is realized, allowing us to craft an experience that we can be really proud of. And here we are having a launch at uh, EVA V2 here. Now, in the past, in Star Citizen, when you were EVAing, you just had to use the thrusters of your suit and you were replacing, you were pressing AWSD. With EVA V2, that's not going to be the case anymore. You'll just have to propel yourself and then with your very own... Um, velocity then you will just launch yourself and that is how you're going to be moving in such an environment specific area that i'm excited to dive in is the feeling of the player interacting with the world around them oh yeah that's something that they've been working on for quite some time 
in Star Citizen. And you already have a lot of missions, well, not a lot, but quite a few missions where you have to find the right objects and uh, place them in the right in the right location or not and if you don't have the wrong object then obviously your mission is not going to succeed this seems like it's uh, the same type of principle but on steroid in score 42 and also using here the map which is going to also make good use i believe of the resource management system it seems so that you can also find the right device that's going to be triggering the element that's going to make you progress into the game Wait. as it's a core component oh. of squadron and really grounds the world that you inhabit. We've made sure that any interaction in the environment is physically represented by a character animation to keep you in the moment and fully immerse you in the experience that we've created. Again, you can see here in the screen showing you in real time the resource management system in action that is the mechanism that is making those large voles moving up and down. Ultimately, this is the final phase of gameplay iteration before we fully can confirm that we are indeed going to have new quantum effects in Squadron 42. Are those going to come in the Star Citizen universe? Well, we definitely need those. They're seriously updated and problematic. I can say that these look absolutely fantastic. We do not have any update as of which planet this is, unfortunately, but it's most likely that this is one of the planets in the Odin system. Transition into optimization and stability on the road. By the way, maybe you noticed the same triangular or star-shaped triangular station uh, that we saw when we were in the ground. Again, showing that what you are seeing in uh, when you are in, in the sky, when you are in the ground, is also what you have in space. There is no uh, transition. There is no fakery in Star Citizen. No skybox. What you are seeing is really what's up there in the sky. To release. Here's your trail. This is Colton. Come back. Always trips me out to see terraforming setups like this. They're pretty We're much all over the, uh, the, the orbit of the planet. Work. Really shows how far we've come. With the transition of Squadron to Polish Phase, we've had the opportunity to find additional moments within the existing narrative to add subtle interactions where appropriate. It's been tremendously exciting to play through these areas and find places to augment the mood, support gameplay, and further embellish our story and characters. So yeah, man, I, I, I can't believe it. They said I've got to wait another two years before I can reapply. <laughs> You're going to have a lot of these dialogue options here. And we saw a lot of videos about dialogues in Squadron 42 and how that dialogue can affect your interaction with the characters. You go a little bit too far, they will not be talking with you anymore. Or if you come uh, back and forth, you know, they think that you're trolling them. And that's also really funny. So, um, so that's why I figured I'd get a job trying try in security because that's, um, you know, I've can get some hours flying in the cockpit and whatnot. Can't hurt, right? Exactly. <laughs> I like also how uh, Mark Hamill playing uh, old man. It sounds like a uh, you know veteran, no bullshit type of character. It's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We've also been capturing pickups for our lead female player character, as well as wild lines for our various enemies that you all will encounter throughout the game on both foot and in your cockpit. These consist of a range of responses and reactions that you as the player can trigger which has been the culmination of efforts by the gameplay and AI teams. This means that you're going to have to tangle with some very smart and reactive bad guys to complete your mission. Now, some of these armors are not in the Persistent Universe, and I think that they are going to be Squadron 42 specific, but they do absolutely look really cool. I love this guy here with the little hair on top, a little bit reminiscent of the helmets that the old Roman soldiers had, but of course, in a much more piratey fashion. AI is making good use of uh, zero G environments. You know, Cutlass once again. Cutlass is being used as pirate ships, and this is an M50 by Origins. Uh, these M50s are known as racer ships, but they are also known as uh, sold as M50 interceptors. I wouldn't be surprised if they are used in Squadron 42 as well as scouts just so that they can go quickly in and out of locations and find for intelligence or details that they could report into the military later. At the heart of this immersive adventure, you'll find cutting-edge cinematic storytelling, 
thoughtfully crafted to fully immerse you into your story. We fight today! This is Admiral Bishop. So Admiral Bishop is portrayed by Gary Oldman. You've probably recognized him. And we've seen his character for a very long time. I think we all remember the infamous Answer the Call video from 2016, which has become a meme, of course. Uh, but this time, I think that uh, we've held the line after <laughs> throughout all these years. The game is feature complete. And uh, it's definitely also, uh, look at brand new hair, fantastic skin details as well. It looks like almost like the real uh, person or at least you know the these are the kind of details that you would see in a uh, in a hollywood movie when they're trying to de-age characters or reproduce uh, deceased characters in in a movie that's what it makes me think of in 40 years from now when you're surrounded by everything and everyone you hold dear and they ask what did you do in the battle of vega you can look them in the eye and say I heard the line. Men and women of the Second Fleet, I am proud to stand with you today. Good luck. Push your bow. Nice speech. Mark Strong, of course, one of the uh, other actors here. Now, the Battle of Vega is said to be one of those battles against the Vendors. We don't know much about it, except that it's rumored that it's going to be at the beginning of the game. Any word from the recon team? Not yet. Well, let's get into position. <sighs> now, it could be that they, could, that they are waiting for a uh, Vendor fleet. Earlier, if you remember, we heard one of the players, the player, sending a message to uh, their mom about having a battle versus the Vandals. Maybe this could be this. Throughout the polish phase, our team is taking every opportunity to push things to the next level. Tell me you're expecting company. This is not good. The Cine team is focused on finalizing edit lock on all of our big action as well as all smaller character sequences. I could have pulled this off of the Galactopedia. Yeah, probably, but I think their solar mass calculations oh are Oh my now. goodness, did you see the difference between before and after? And again, the before was like when they didn't have the new hair tech and the new skin tech, which is also going to implement sweating, which is going to add a little difference in how your character's skin is going to be reflected because of the humidity the, and the moist that's on the skin. All of that now well, this is ridiculous. Is existing. So? We are now able to adjust our shot composition to final cameras thanks to recently crafted space vistas and level art being content complete now. It'd be nice to know how much of a shitstorm we're flying into. More like a hailstorm, Blue. One you ain't gonna fly out of. <laughs> Shut up. Now, I hadn't seen another ship that wasn't trying to kill me in days, let alone a hauler, let alone a Jean. So you can imagine my surprise. Detailed lighting passes can be done on hero sequences so we can show our cast and convey their emotions in the best light possible. And we're making sure our cinematics are triggering as fluid as we can craft them so they form a coherent concerto with the rest of the player's narrative experience. Mr. Wexler! So what you're looking at here is a different type of character. We are inside the Shubin mining station, which is one of the uh, big landing zones, the biggest landing zone in Squadron 42. And the actor that we are seeing here is, of course, Ben Mendelsohn, quite famous for his role in Rogue One. Oh, it's beautiful. It's <laughs> one of my favorite lines in that movie. Anyway. This is Lieutenant Commander Colton. Oh. Commander, hey, Julian Wexler. I'm the field manager of this little operation. Welcome aboard the Archon. What brings the Navy to this little corner of the universe? We got you flying with Lieutenant Commander Colton. He's one of our best. As others will share, this is the most rewarding chapter of development, which allows us to truly experience the visceral and oftentimes emotional moments that our narrative provides. Now here we're going to be seeing the difference with the latest character How development. How did you handle it after Vega? Look at that. All the sweat and the tears, at least no blood, right? I'm not sure I handled anything. Again, confirming that 
this battle of Vega happening at the beginning of the uh, Squadron 42 campaign is going to be a defining moment of the story as well. It helps to remember that stuff like this is supposed to hurt. I've never been good at dealing with problems I can't fix. Well, this is one that you don't have to do alone. That's good to know. For the Again, that's also a big difference between, say, other games like Starfield, where your character is not voiced. Or another, uh, I will say it again, in Squadron 42, you have a voice character, and on top of that, you are going to be able to choose between various voices. That is also something you don't see in a lot the of The animation games. team's polish phase means refining the social aspects of Squadron 42 that occur between the various missions and getting the behaviors implemented across all of its chapters. Here we're dialing in the hangar to make it as immersive and believable an experience as possible. So what you're looking at here is the hangar of an Idris frigate. It is not the biggest ship that there is in the verse. It's not the biggest uh, hangar that you will see in the verse as well. Bengal carriers have a much bigger hangar than that. This one can accommodate just a few gladiuses. The gladius is the ship that you can see right there. It's obviously the wing here. But what's really important is that it's going to be making you feel that you are still in a living and breathing universe with a ton of activities. Each of the NPCs that you see there are living their own lives. And you're going to see that there's quite a procedure that you are going to have to follow if you want to be taking off your ship. Hey, all right, all right. I love the effect that we are seeing here as this uh, little uh, Argo MPUV is going through that force shield that separates the vacuum of the space of the air inside the ship. Again, we can still see the uh, radar that shows you the interior of the hangar. Got the compass here at the top center. Did you hear that NPC example, saying that they are we're off? We're launching off a space carrier, but we still ground the feel in real-world actions, refueling, repairing, and inspecting, and making sure that your next flight mission is a success. And that's going to be the job. This of means the NPC we're looking out for here. pops, hiccups, or awkward transitions ensuring that everything flows and looks like all the great mocap performances we've captured. The game is also going to be featuring medics. That's what you're looking at here and medical supplies that players will be able to apply, say if they are injured or hurt or perhaps sick. Let's ready some extra ice packs out of storage. Whenever gunners are on full rotation, you can always count on at least one of them getting hurt. We also have you covered in everyday life. The medical staff work diligently for their patients, whether they're players or crew. We really want you to feel part of an authentic crew, an important part of the UEE Navy in an enormous universe of people going about their everyday lives. And what you're seeing here, another new feature here, these are some of the new buttons that we don't have in Star Citizen, but we are going to have those new interactions very soon. And of course, they are going to be featured in Star Citizen. You have to find where your button is to start your ship, to start your engines. Of course, there are going to be hotkeys, but if you don't want to be using the hotkeys, you can also have the interaction mode to have a more realistic and immersive experience. <laughs> Let's go ahead and clear There's the takeoff. ATC, air traffic Ground controller. Ready for takeoff. Copy that. Hang on. By, by the way, that ATC you see here on the screen, this is not faked. He is somewhere in the ship, really having this animation and really talking. Launch. Takeoff approved, Baron 2. You have the ball. Baron is, of course, the name of the squadron that you are joining in. Baron Leader is. Well, the character played by Mark Hamill, Old Man, and Baron 2 is you as his sweetheart. Ready and hold on as you're launched off the deck of the carrier. Baron 2, 
Now, we saw the character using the thumbs up here. There's no word as of this is actually a signal that says that you're clear for launch that you can do by pressing a button or if this is an automatic anim animation. It would be cool though, if there was indeed a hotkey that would make your character do the little thumbs up here and then this would trigger the launch of the ship, but that we don't know yet. Have a safe flight, Baron. Not only there we go, seeing the coil again, the leftovers of that planet, which is where, as I said earlier, most of the action is happening in Squadron 42. Decide how you play the game, but to feel as if the people you interact with are in that world with you. Now, this is also what we're looking at here is the armory, which is where you will be able to have, well, pretty much all of these guns available at your request. What you're looking at here in the hands of this armor is a Gemini R97, as you're going to be saying later. This is a shotgun, a fast firing shotgun. So very good at clo uh, close combat, but at uh, long range, it's not going to be that so that, that good. Other ships from uh, G from other sorry other guns from Gemini, including the S71 that we can here see here. It's an assault rifle, the C54 here, which is more like a small submachine gun, and the LH86, which is an automatic pistol that that kind of feels a little bit like a machine gun, but it's more like a, a pistol. I would have never thought a shotgun a could be so pretty. Damn, this R97 is sleek as hell. Like a lot of other weapons in Gemini's arsenal, it has a higher rate of fire than most guns of its type. You can press F to inspect your uh, gun as well. We're working to support a feel of authenticity through world traversals, running, jumping and climbing. It seems like there's going to be a lot of these uh, platform types of gameplay, and this is again combining the best, the the best of uh, all worlds here within the video gaming industry. It's not just going to be about shooting things in your ship. You are going to have a lot of on ground activities where you are going to have to use your brains as well, making use of the best of the environment that you see around. Interactions with objects and the environment. Now, this is something that we don't have in a game right now, these kinds of MIDI games where you have to uh, press repeatedly buttons so that you can have interactions with the game. But it seems like it's something that is going to be coming in the next couple of uh, months when it comes to uh, forcing, opening doors, or even having a fight with NPCs or players alike. And there we go, the door is open. Solid weapon gameplay and enemy reactions. As well as combat realities. So what we saw here before, that was very interesting here. This is definitely a uh, training ground. There's also, as you can see, some kind of interface that shows you how much time you have left. So what I suppose this is here is the uh, shooting range that would be inside the ship where you will be at the beginning of the game, which is where you will be learning how to use weapons, how to get used to the recoil, how to get used to how these weapons works. And uh, it's kind of a process that you have in a lot of various games and Squadron 42 is just not going to be any difference compared to these other games. We also have the uh, UI that we haven't talked about here on the bottom right, where you have the different ammo that is in your gun. Under that is the ammo that you are carrying on your belt. But if it's inside your backpack, you will have a backpack uh, icon too. You have two grenades and three med pens as well as combat realities. Now what you saw here was, this is the LH-86 from Gemini, and it's this pistol, it kind of looks like a mini machine gun, and that's why it fires so quick. Just weapon malfunctions. So again, there was a weapon malfunction here. To make it work, just press R repeatedly, and then it will fix the gun. But if you don't do so, you will not be able to shoot. Or in close encounters of the more lethal kind there we go that's how you get in a, <laughs> in a struggle with another player now look at this and i was so impressed when i saw that of course you're in a sewage of some kind of facility but the water 
that is uh, going to be moving uh, because of the mass or the volume of that other character, well, that water is also uh, making little waves on each side. Again, showing you how far they have gone with the water technology that they have for their star engine. As we continue to focus on Look the quality this. experience, we've been working closely with our art teams, and it's been exciting to see their environments come to life alongside us. While animation and design have been populated in locations, polished phase for my teams means making huge advancements in the quality of our characters and environments. We've established our standard with recognizable characters like Mark Hamill, Julian Anderson, and Gary Oldman. And we're now applying this to the rest of the cast and identifying any remaining tech requirements that need to be closed out. So that's basically part of the uh, polishing phase, right? They, the main characters are already done, but they have to do the same level of detail for all the t minor characters or secondary characters that they have. The story of Squadron 42 takes you through a variety of diverse locations of varying scales and styles. We shared glimpses of several environments before, and there's still plenty out there for you to discover. As that uh, star station that we saw a little bit earlier. Uh, let's have a look at what we saw before, because this does not look human. We at shared all. glimpses. This almost looks like. Uh, I mean, I could be wrong, but I think that we are inside a Vendel ship. Of several environments before, and there's still plenty out there for you to discover. One of the main challenges the art team has had to face during the development of Squadron 42 is ensuring the visuals are complementary to the narrative of the script. The mood and feeling of a space. Sam, this is also a ship that we have never seen before. Now, we were told during CitizenCon that there are ships that are specific to Squadron 42, and this looks like it is one of them. I don't think it's an alien ship. I think it's more like a, a pirate or scrappers ship. Uh, as also suggested by the overall um, stripped down theme of the area that we are at. It's just as important to us as it is making sure we hit the visual quality that CIG has become known for. No good, we can't hack it from this side. Graves, we've got a locked door. Can you give us access? No, I'm afraid that's a negative, Steve. Uh, I would have to add you to our system to give you override permissions, and uh, yeah, there's a lot involved in that, it won't happen quickly. Okay, we'll figure something out. Everything you see during the campaign has been heavily inspired by the classics of 70s and 80s sci-fi, but with a modern twist. We want everything you see to feel like it has a soul, its own personality, and tells of a history long before you arrived. Now again, as I, as I said, I'm not gonna lie, I have no idea and of, tells of what we are looking at here, but as I said, it looks quite alien. Uh, I have a theory about the reason why most of the action is happening in the Odin system, but this is going to be for another video another day, so make sure to subscribe if you want to be notified when this video Everything you see out. to feel like it has a soul, its own personality, and tells of a history long before you arrived. That's probably a hint. What, is, what I believe, I'll tell you what I believe. I believe that the Vendals, which is the, the antagonist species that, that fights the, the human species, the Vendals were in that system before, and that there is a reason why one of the planets, planet, I think it's uh, Odin 1, is destroyed. And I think the Vendals are responsible for that, and they don't want humans to know why. That's that's my theory. And I, I, I'm not saying this because of leaks. I haven't seen any leaks. I don't know. It's just an educated guess. Crafting interesting flight spaces and their connection. We are seeing a retired bomber here. Tin tissue has been one of the more earlier. unique challenges we've needed to overcome for Squadron. Developing our VDB tech to blend seamlessly between tighter traversal spaces and into wider space vistas and planets has proved incredibly difficult but rewarding. Ensuring that lighting with those asteroids and shadow rocks is so next, impressive. Without interruption. Creating a diverse array of locations is essential to us. Our environments need to work from a variety of scales. We need to pay close attention to detail 
whether we're working in a dirty engineering vent or navigating the debris of a dying star, wondering what may be around that next corner or even who may live there, how would they have survived and what state of mind may they be in? So now we are in the bridge of the uh, Bengal carrier and uh, you, can, you will be able to interact with all the characters that are here in this bridge. And if one day you get to fly one of those ships for yourself, you will also be able to use that, uh, that command bubble here, which is where you can see can, you'll be able to have like some kind of uh, technical view of the battlefield or the area where you are at. We've worked closely with our social teams in delivering a cohesive social experience when you're taking some downtime from our refined flight and FPS missions, or even missions of the more eerie kind. And that's something really interesting here, that character is obviously not dead. So maybe you'll have a chance to revive that character using some of the gear that you already have at your disposal. We'll be introducing new... Wait, let's go back. Let's go back. There's something really interesting here. Sync to Moby Glass. So he might not be very conscious here, but at least you can see his Moby Glass and see what's happening. Maybe he had uh, some uh, visuals of what happened to him. So maybe you could find some information about what happened. Seems like we'll the be of the ship was also space stations too. on a massive scale. Now, Shubin is one of the minor factions of Star Citizen in the Persons universe, but will have a much bigger presence in Squadron 42. This station is said to be the equivalent of a landing zone that we have in the Persistent universe. It's going to have its own shops, its own uh, transit system, and of course, its own uh, little city with, inside All the station. All brought together and designed to be as tangible as possible. We've thought about their function, their age, and try to ensure... That's another type of ship that will probably not be uh, interactable by, with players, but we can still see it as local traffic here. I have no idea what this ship here looks like, some kind of a cargo barge. progression in artistic style with each station as you progress through the game. I also love the escalator here, which really gives or reinforce that would say this sense of scale and just how large the station is where you're going toward a shopping district for example there's like there's an icon for stairs so you could choose to take the escalators or maybe the stairs if it doesn't work it's like they also have elevators too and again this is really important in squadron 42 and star citizen you have some so, some sort of uh, survivability elements as well survival elements so you are going to have to also eat and drink so that your character uh, doesn't die because you may eventually die if you never hydrate yourself. So sometimes it's just a, a good time to s stop a little bit, take a seat and have something to drink or to eat. And the NPCs will be doing today, the same. The teams are working incredibly hard, ramping up the detail and quality to match the breadth of our vision for Squadron 42. Now, if you know what this ship is, let me know in the comment section down below. Uh, it looks a little bit rusty. At first, I would say that this could be a, a pioneer, but it could also be the barge that we saw, but from a different angle. Now, I know you're all asking, when can I play it? When can I play it? <laughs> when we have the locked release date, you will be the first to know. Now, we're in polishing phase on Squadron 42. You will start to see a lot more things coming to Star Citizen as well as overall progress on the Persistent Universe. Again, they want to make sure that the game is as perfect as it can be. So that's why no release date. My estimation is that we are going to have the release date next year at next year's season con. They are going to be using the next 12 months to fully polish this game, make sure it is in a good state. And next year they will be giving us that release date because they will feel that the game will be uh, ready to be released within the next couple of months but so far no release date of course and uh, i think that we've had enough scoring 42 for the next uh, 12 months that is uh, a lot of good news and uh, a lot to digest from everything that we've seen the polish phase can take some time we have come this far and we want to make sure squadron 42 delivers on the promise of being this generation's wing commander 
Now, even though there's only a few of us in this video, I'd like to extend a big thank you to all our staff around the globe who have been putting their heart and soul into bringing Squadron 42 to life. And I would like to thank everyone in the community for your patience and your support. To paraphrase Admiral Bishop, when people ask, what did you do in the development of Squadron 42? You can look them in the eye and say, I held the line. We did hold the line indeed. I'm proud to stand with you. Thank you for making this It was this a long time us. to get this uh, news here, but yeah. Looks like this is it. We're getting ever closer. Oh, what are we looking at here? These are the Vandals. So I was talking about the Vandals a lot in this video. Here they are. And it's a human new species, definitely much taller than humans. And uh, they look like the big bad guys. And that's how we are going to be ending this video. If you enjoyed this little breakdown, let me know in the comment section down below. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you want to see more Star Citizen and Squadron 42 content. And uh, you can also help me out on Patreon over here at the YouTube Show Membership Program if you want to go the extra mile. Thank you so much to Dr. Fabian, Zero Crusher, and the Broad Bone Fidel. I've been Irad, and I'll see you guys in the next one.